Dad, how'd you get that spit all the way through that ham? I got my ways. Hey gang, it's Paul with Step Back. Welcome back to our channel. We have a little bit of a different video for you today. As you can see, I'm not in work clothes. We're doing a little bit of work away from work. So it's Easter weekend. We hope you're having a great weekend wherever you are. And I have big plans scheduled for tomorrow's Easter dinner. But before I can do that, our grill needs some work. So we got three things I want to do to it. The old factory igniter stopped working, so we're going to fix that. I don't have anywhere to hang my spatula and my tongs and my brush, so we're going to take care of that. Just like you see me wear my tool bags and I got a place for all my tools, I don't have a place for my tools on here. I'm tired of putting them on here and then I have to clean everything, so we're going to let them hang right here. And then the last thing we're going to do, you might notice this rotisserie rod up here. This grill comes with holes for rotisserie, and I actually have this old one that I've never used. It was for another brand of grill. And I figured, why don't we see if we can adapt it to this charbroil one? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're even missing a part for this. I guess when we moved from the West Coast, it got lost somewhere. So we have to make a part. So why don't we jump right into this thing and fix that igniter? All righty, gang. This is the OEM igniter module that actually generates the spark from a AA battery. You know what, guy? That kind of looks like a, a little GoPro, maybe a... A Gen 1? Yeah, you know? I'm on the, it's like I'm looking at myself, looking at you. How's it feel I, being on, on camera? <laughs> All right, so this, so this is the original. And remember, it wasn't generating a spark. And it mounted down here, and it had a cap where you could change the AA battery. And the push button to, to actually make a spark was right here. Now, that push button wasn't working either. So this is trash. And I bought a new igniter from Lowe's. And it comes with a push button cap. So we're going to mount it in the original hardware that was here. And I'll just have to open the door to push that. Now, if I did have this part, the two wires from this switch would attach right here where my fingers are. But this one actually comes with a jumper. This jumper comes with this ignition module. And now we're ready to go. Now, when I push the button, can you see the spark? And you can hear it, too. So now that we have our jumper here where the original switch was, we're left with five terminals. So this will support up to five burners. We just have four on this grill the three main burners, and then the side auxiliary burner. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to take these here. We're going to plug them in. One, two, three, four. All right, we've got our wires hooked up, our battery's in. Let's see if it works. Gas is on. Turn on the middle burner. Perfect. Look at that. Sweet. So what I've been having to do is use the little match attachment. And there's a hole in the side, and you'll be able to see it from up there. And you can come in here and light it. That was a pain. So I'm so glad to get this fixed. Now let's check the side burner. All right, it actually lit up pretty easy that time, but I've been having some trouble with this one being intermittent. And then what I found was, check right here. When I push the button, you see that spark right there? I felt like I was getting a short, so I wasn't getting current to the igniter. So I just took this wire that's way off in the corner and put it there. See, now this one's so far from that, that a spark won't generate, and now it works every time. First try. So that's awesome. If you're having that problem on your grill, maybe check that out. See if maybe you're getting a short back here. So now that that's fixed, let's mount that to this panel and get this put back on along with these doors. I'm so happy we got that igniter on there. No more dark ages with the matches and trying to stick it in there and hope you got it in the right spot. Step number one is done. Step number two, let's put us some hooks here so we can hang all our tongs and wire brushes and forks and spatulas. I got these from McMaster Car, of course. And all we're gonna do is drill one, two, three, four, put a nut on each side of it to lock them in. Then we can hang our utensils. First step, let's see what size hole we need. 3 16 bud. I'm just putting some tape on here so I can see my pencil line. Pencil line doesn't really like to write on stainless steel. All right, gang, this grill has holes on the side support shelves all along here and even on the back. And at first I was just gonna enlarge those, 
but that would be kind of a pain coming over here you know where's my where's my spatula but with, in the front it's all right there so we're just going to drill new holes so I've got my blue tape on there see I won't be able to see that pencil on there but that'll work fine what is that three inches here's the middle an inch and a half see how that square is marked with those notches you go here all right and then how far from the edge inch and a half I'll go three we got the room yeah all right let's center punch those and drill them wasn't bad at all. Now we're ready to mount our hooks. So my goal on this project was not to go to the store for anything. I wanted to use what I had in my garage. So I have these little serrated flange lock nuts. I'm going to put one on the back and one on the front and it'll lock these in place and keep them from spinning. All right, let's put all four of them on and then we'll tighten them. All right, those are three eighths inch nuts. So I have two wrenches. This one was actually my dad's and I love this thing. It's like an offset box in wrench. Forged in the USA, Dunlap. Very cool. Jordan's gonna hold that straight. Here, I got, yeah, I got, I got this in the back. All right, ready? Okay. All right. You know what I wanna do right now? I wanna hang some utensils on there. Let's try it out. Now these tongs, for example, did not come with a hole in it. So I drilled that myself. Of course. And these leather straps, guess where I got those? McMaster.com. It's a, it's a leather lace, and then I just make my own. Look at that. Woohoo! And then when it's windy outside, you have a, you have a barbecue uh, wind chime. <laughs> Sweet! That is so nice. I can't tell you how long I've been putting them up here and hated it. Then I didn't have room for my trays and everything. Cool. Step number two done. Let's get this rotisserie hooked up. All right, step three, the rotisserie. Now, like we said, Charbroil does make their own rotisserie that attaches to the factory supplied mounting holes on either side. I have this old one. It is not a Charbroil brand. It will not bolt here. So we're gonna adapt this bracket to work on this grill. So this motor slides on to this mount. This mount would kind of work right there, wouldn't it? But the problem with that is your meat's too high above the flame. And then you couldn't close the lid because the lid has these slots in it that accommodate the rotisserie rod. So let's adapt this bracket to this grill. The first thing we need to do is remove this section right here. And we're gonna do that with a metal cutoff wheel on our grinder. So not the best cut in the world, not stud pack quality, but that's okay because we have to cut this to length and we'll make a nice perfect finish cut when we're ready for that. So let's come over here and measure this thing. All right, this spit, when it's turning, we don't want it rubbing on the grill. So I put a 16th spacer. I'd like more room, but it's pretty tight right here where the hood closes and accommodates this spit. So that's sitting up on a 16th spacer. All we have to do now, put that in there. Now we can get through here and mark those two holes and drill them. All right, it's looking like a rotisserie to me. We have one more thing to do. And that looks like factory right there. Now these bolts are a little longer than I like, but remember, this is a no trip to the hardware store kind of project. I'm gonna use exactly what I have, including these electrical crimp connectors. We're gonna use those as a spacer, and here's why. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said we're missing a part. That part we're missing is the one that supports this end of the spit. Now these spits come with different extensions to accommodate the width of your grill and there's no combination that works for this grill. And what I mean by that is we're gonna make a plate that supports this end of the spit, and ideally I'd like it to go right there. But you can see we're just a little bit short. 
we need to be in these grooves right here because all this end does is spins in a slot. And these are gonna work perfectly to space this off like that and then we'll line up with one of these grooves. So all we have to do, drill two holes in here, just like we did down there, make a slot for this, attach it, and we're ready to go. So let's mark this and drill it. Spacers work good. It's a heat isolation spacer. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab this extension cord. Let's fire that thing up, see if it works. All right, bud, hit that switch. We're turning, look at that. I think that's two RPM. Cool, I'm stoked. We're ready to cook, man. All right, this thing is all ready mechanically, but you know what? It's pretty dirty. Why don't we go inside, grab some cleaner, and give this thing a once over so it's all ready for Easter Sunday dinner. Let's do it. And I can't tell you what it feels like to see that turning on a spit in my backyard. That is so cool. I've always wanted one of these. That took less than an hour to hook up. I got all my utensils here. Thing is sparkling clean. Awesome. We got a spiral ham. We're gonna try it on the grill. Got it wrapped so it doesn't come apart. And all we gotta do is heat it up. I've got my Texas apron on in honor of my good friends in Texas. Got my stud pack hat. Get your own at studpack.com. This is a little different for us and for you. If you enjoy seeing us doing something like this, let us know in the comments. We're always fixing things on the side, fixing furniture, whatever, away from the job site. Always busy, just like you guys are. So we're gonna let this cook. Get down there below, hit that like button for us. Like we said, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, ask a question, and we'll see you on the next one.